Hi friends, my name is Katie. Welcome back to my channel, Life Between Words. It is the beginning of February. No, not the beginning of February. It's the beginning of March. Where is my head? I guess February was just kind of like a crazy month for me, so I'm still a month behind. Anyway, I'm here to do my February wrap-up because it's the beginning of March. It has not been the best beginning of the year for my reading. However, I feel like I have some legitimate excuses. January, my baby was born. February, he spent a month in the hospital. So, if my reading isn't up to snuff, I really am okay with that because I still managed to read four books in the month of February, despite spending a week of that time in the hospital with a very sick child, and also just generally adjusting to life with a newborn and a toddler, and my life is crazy, and that's just the way it is, and I love it, and I accept it, and I'm still getting reading done, so, you know, who can complain? Not me. Let's talk about the books I read in the month of February. The first book I read and completed was Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. This was a reread for me. I have read this book multiple times. This was probably my third or fourth time reading Pride and Prejudice. I love Jane Austen so much. She is the queen of the romantic comedy. I just don't think you can beat her romance or her writing. I love that when you read a Jane Austen novel, the humor holds up. And the humor is not something that you think can be timeless. And yet, I still find myself laughing out loud when I read this book. I still find her writing so relevant and easy to engage with. If you're not used to reading books from this time period, it does take a little bit of adjustment to get used to the language, but once you're there, once you get it, you get it and you can sink into the story and just let it penetrate your soul, which is what these books do to me. You can't beat Jane Austen. Like I said, she's the queen. I am breastfeeding my son Wilder. I'm nursing and when you are nursing, it's very hard to hold up a physical copy of a book. So I have used that as a very good excuse to always have an ebook going because I have many, many ebooks on my e-reader. I just don't automatically go to pick up my e-reader. So anyway, um, the book that I read in the month of February on my e-reader was called Mischling by something Konar? Sheesh, excuse me while I check my Goodreads. By Affinity Konar. I didn't really like this book, you guys. I gave it a really good shot. And because I have a very hard time DNFing books, I still finished it even though I wasn't enjoying myself while I was reading it at all. Not that it's necessarily a book that you can enjoy yourself reading, because of the subject matter, it was just not the book for me. I thought the premise of the book was fascinating. It follows these twins during World War II who find themselves in Dr. Mengele's zoo. Dr. Mengele was the Nazi doctor who did experiments on twins and other people with um, genetic abnormalities. He set up this laboratory basically at Auschwitz and conducted these experiments on all of these different people. Well, anyway, it follows these twins who are at Mengele's zoo and <sighs> I found the writing too abstract for the story being told. Now, on the one hand, I appreciated it because, given the subject matter, it could have been extremely gratuitous and over the top and just the kind of thing that feels like you're exploiting these people who whose real lives were affected by Dr. Mengele's depravity. But I felt so detached from the characters and so detached from the story because of the writing style that I felt it did a disservice. I think some people would probably think the writing was beautiful. However, I felt like it was overly affected. I felt like it was extremely pretentious and just wasn't the kind of writing style that speaks to me. I feel like beautiful writing can be beautiful without being hard to muddle through. I gave it two stars because while I really didn't like it and I didn't think the book was for me, I do understand the value of it and I see the importance of it and I can even see why some people like it, but the writing style was a huge turnoff for me, so in the end, yes, two stars. Next, I picked up Anne of Green Gables. This was a, I don't even know how many times I've read Anne of Green Gables, but this time I listened to it on audiobook, performed by Rachel McAdams, and I know I've said this a million times on my channel by now, but I absolutely loved listening to Rachel McAdams perform the story of Anne of Green Gables. She brought it to life so beautifully. Her depictions of Anne and Marilla, and I mean, it was just perfection, start to finish. It was delightful and just what I needed when I was in the hospital with Wilder. It brought life to my soul because that's what the story of Anne of Green Gables does to me. I love the character of Anne. I love her spunk. I love her passion. I love her imagination. I love her 
devotion to her friends and to Matthew and Marilla who become her family. I love the way that the hearts of the people around her change. Anne will just always, always be one of my all-time favorite heroines. I just could read this story over and over again, and I probably will. I will read this book for the rest of my life. I mean, not back to back, but you know what I'm saying. And just so you know, people ask me about these editions of Anne of Green Gables all the time. These are Canadian editions. They were published by a publisher in Canada called Tundra Books. I am not Canadian, but my husband got these for me for Christmas a few years ago. You can find them other places than Canada. It's just hard to do. I could collect all the copies of Anne of Green Gables, all of the editions. Give them to me. And then finally, I read The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. What? What? That's my husband playing video games again. I thought he was talking to me, but I don't think he was. Anyway, um, I really loved this book, you guys. I loved it so much. When I closed the last page of this book, it was the first time in so, so long that I felt like there was a piece of me that was going to stay with this book where I knew that these characters would reside in my heart for a long time. The premise of this book is that it's a group of people on a spaceship that punches holes between two places in the universe. They get a job on a faraway planet, and the whole book is them traveling to that planet to punch a hole. The action in the book doesn't really happen until probably the last 30 to 50 pages, and so in some ways that ending feels a little bit rushed, but I'm not sure how else Becky Chambers could have done it, and I still felt like the ending needed to happen. My one criticism of the book is that it felt at times pretty didactic to me. I felt like it was a little bit moralizing, and I don't always want to be preached to in the stories that I read, and anyway, that's kind of what I felt like was happening in this book, but ultimately that didn't take away the experience from me. I still fell in love with the characters. I still fell in love with the story that she was that she told. I have said this so many times on my channel. I feel like I'm just beating a dead horse, but I love stories with good characters and she wrote really really good characters. Now, there's not a lot of conflict or at least not a lot of conflict between these characters that you kind of want to see in stories and the conflict that does happen happens towards the end of the book, but it's not between those characters, it's with an entirely new set of characters that we meet. So anyway, I feel like that's a little bit of a storytelling problem, but I still really loved this book a lot. I am clearly sleep deprived and my brain is far, far away from here because I forgot to do a sign off for that video. So here I am to say that those were all the books that I read in March. I hope, March, see, what am I talking about? Those are all the books that I read in February. I hope that you all are having a great start to March. Please let me know in the comments below what your favorite book that you read in February was. And I hope that your beginning to March is going great. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more. And I will talk to you all later. Bye. LaCroix, little tidbit here, uh, was founded in Wisconsin in La Crosse because La Croix is the French, it's like the French way to say La Crosse. Anyway, La Crosse, Wisconsin is where La Croix was founded and so it was like this sort of local sparkling water drink that all of the stay-at-home moms consumed. Anyway, and now it's become hugely popular and not that I mind because I love LaCroix, but I just think that's really hilarious. That there's all these hipsters that are drinking LaCroix that think they're all cool and stuff when really it's a drink that their parents slash grandparents drank back in the 80s and 90s like it was no, no big thing.